Hey there, how's it going? It's Lord Char1892 and welcome to another Lords of the Fallen video. Today we're going to be going over 10 of the things I wished I knew before I started playing Lords of the Fallen. The Lords of the Fallen is a reboot of the game Lords of the Fallen released in 2014. But it seems that they have carried over some story elements and some NPCs from the first game over into the second game. So it's more of a sequel. The Rune of Adir, the Seed of Discord. Harkin at the end of the first game defeats Antanas and has the Rune of Adir and he has three options. Is Sparky the crafter from the first game? <laughs> it's perfect, yes. So if you want to be fully immersed into the world, I recommend you look up a YouTube video for the original lore and story of the first game before you start this game. Vestige Seeds are capped at 5. Vestige seeds can be used to place temporary bonfires throughout the game, but the game limits you on how many can be active at once. You can only have one active at a time. You can obtain vestige seeds three different ways, from defeating the boss, from killing the enemy Womb of Despair while in Umbral, or by purchasing it from an NPC in the main hub area. Most of the flower beds in this game are considered baked. They're placed in awkward areas, or if you progress a little bit further, you'll find a second, better suited flower bed. So whenever you see a flower bed, make sure it's one you want to use. Most of the time, you'll see a flower bed before a boss room, which is a recommended use. Or after you beat the boss, you will see another flower bed. Do not use it on one of those, because if you progress a little bit further after the boss, you most likely will encounter the ancient vestige. Unintentional quest progression. Throughout the game, you will encounter some elevators that will progress you to a different area. Taking these elevators will sometimes end the side quest that you're currently on if you haven't finished it. Also, some boss arenas will fail one of your side quests if you haven't completed all parts. So make sure you complete your side quest before going into your boss arenas. Whenever you're playing the game, you will notice small numbers that appear whenever you do damage. These numbers indicate what type of damage you are doing. If you see grayed out numbers, that means the enemy resists the type of damage you are doing. White numbers are neutral damage, and red numbers indicates that you are doing extra damage to that enemy with the current weapon type or attributes. Photo mode in this game can be used as a sort of a pause button if you need to get your bearings or as an exploration tool for you to look around to see if there's any ambushes coming up or items you have missed. Parrying is affected by the weight of the weapon you currently have. For example, light or smaller weapons have a higher parry window. Heavy and large weapons have a very narrow parrying window making it a little bit harder to parry. This game is changing all the time. It makes it a little bit difficult to keep up to date with all the new strategies and the best methods to do something. So before you watch a YouTube video, make sure you check the publishing date to make sure it's not too far behind or else the information will be outdated. Now, similar to how elevators and boss arenas can progress side quest, the beacons you are asked to cleanse will progress what sort of ending you get for the game. Now, if you are not sure what ending you want to accomplish, make sure you do not cleanse any beacon until you know for sure because they will lock you out of the other endings. Now, if you don't enjoy playing the game multiple times, you would want to shoot for the umbral ending seen as it's the best possible ending. And finally, if you are a strength enjoyer or just a classy unga bunga dude, go ahead and purchase that Pilgrim Perch key at the early start of the game. It will give you the best possible start to the game. If you need some help or a walkthrough, go ahead and check out the video I've already produced. It will get you to plus 7 weapon and have 5 of your Estus Flask charge right at the beginning of the game. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Go ahead, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Now let me know in the comment section what tips and tricks you would have liked to know before starting Lords of the Fallen. I'll see you guys in the next video. And special shout out to IGGM for sponsoring the channel. Their information can be found in the description of the video. If you don't have time to farm and rather get your items a different way, go ahead and hit them up.